Welcome to Performance Reviews, where I give you the review from the technician's point of view. And today we're going to be looking at this very odd, very strange Vintage Royal 7300. So let's get started. And with none of the parts being available, we're going to be very, very careful with it. The first thing I'm going to do is just take the handle part, because that doesn't need to be on there for this. And <laughs> save a little Molox plug in there. So we got the handle. The reason their Molox plug is the switch is directly on here. This is really well built, naturally. Uh, this is very similar to a Recar Vibrance. If you've, uh, it's got a wider hose. Or Simplicity 7000 would be another equivalent machine. This is the style classic upright that I think like. If you, don't, if you have like an apartment or something, I think this is a great style of vacuum for you. Or like a one level house with mostly carpet. I think this is a pretty good option. Oof, man. Um, do I not, do I not like taking this apart? I'm looking at how it's put together and I gotta get water and stuff. I'm not really happy about this idea. I've got a lot of projects going on right now too got a series of Dyson videos I'm doing so that's kind of taking some priority away from these repairs fortunately repair videos just don't get the views and I need constant views in order to be on YouTube unfortunately that's how the system works so this is very similar to the simplicity recar system uh, I like how there's a little hole there for the screw to go all the way through. Interesting design choice. I'm just going to continue taking this thing apart. And really feel like using a gentler soap would be better okay on this. All right, so we got this. This is the pro apart. And again, this all looks very, very simple because it is simple how it comes apart, but again, it's kind of dirty. So that comes off. <laughs> Man, and then there's one of these. The way this hose is held in place right here, I have had to go to the emergency room from slicing my finger open on the recar version of that. So I'm not too thrilled about having to pull that off. Oh, I might even heat that up with the heat gun later. We'll deal with that last. Uh, let's show you what's inside the machine because that's... Now there's a half moon design here which is odd. There, there's, you would think there'd be a, a full circle around there and there's not. Alright, so there's the motor. Yeah, I'm glad I'm taking this sparkle wash. It really needed it. Uh, let's see what's in here. Man, that is a nice gasket. Uh, polyurethane. So, uh, you would think it was two fan, but it's not. It's single fan with an extra shroud on it. That's interesting. Um, now you have your electronics are going to be in this section, just like a Simplicity Recar. Bam. Oh, 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 come on. Can your vacuum do this? How about this? Probably not. That's why you're watching this video because your vacuum isn't doing this. Well, if you're looking for a straightforward, easy to use, and powerful vacuum cleaner, you should check out my video on the Zero-G. It's one of the best values on the market. The Zero-G is also very durable. It glides effortlessly, moving on a cushion of air. Check out my review in the card above. Just like a Simplicity Recar, you gotta pull the gasket off. Oh, there's the gasket. And 
this is really easy to service, really straightforward. I bet you a lot of dealers liked these back in the day and were just kind of sad about not selling them. Yeah, this is, there's like quick releases on everything. This is just really, really nice. Look at this cord quick release. This is unnecessary, but it's there. <laughs> so I appreciate it. Look at that. And it's even got a mold molding to take this part in and out of here, just like so. There we go. Pulling the wiring out. Yeah, I can pull the wiring out and leave everything intact. That's Oh, that's cool. There's a quick release on that. I don't know why there would be a quick release on that, but there is. We'll wash that. Wow. That's uh, really kind of cool to work with. All right, so all the wiring, all the guts comes out as one piece, basically, except for the cord, which I'm going to just yank out of here. Oh man, uh, it's odd. They put a quick change on the cord, but there's no way to uh, actually get it out with the quick change. That's that's fucking so fucking weird. Um, well, because I do want to wash this, uh, we'll just cut this with plenty of room to splice it in at a later date. We'll plug that in there. That's how we strip that to wash that. Man, everything else is, uh, like I said, really, really simple. I've got a whole bunch of stuff i got to put in the dishwasher, so we're going to go ahead and do that now. Um, so, yeah, that's what's inside the Royal. I was able to put most of the Royal in the dishwasher with the exemption of the main body. So this is how it came out. And I've got some gaskets and various things up here. Now, I neglected to wash this filter. They're no longer available. Normally I would replace something like this, so I'm going to wash it and see how it turns out. So off camera, I took this and I blew the motor out with compressed air the best I could. Um, it's still kind of... I think we're going to wipe it down now. It's kind of fuchsia still. Um, this sort of motor doesn't react very well to be taken apart, so that's why you're not seeing me break this apart. Um, you, you, again, you could, but I... I I'm not a fan of doing that with this sort of thing, especially considering how rare this is. So I did hand wash uh, this section here, this big ass section. We're gonna, it's kind of flopping around, but that's what's gonna do uh, for the remainder of the repair. So let's start putting things back together. I did also find out that this came out, so that was kind of cool. Wish I had put that in the dishwasher, but hell, can't, nobody's perfect. Uh, speaking of dishwasher parts, we probably want some of them now. Got a big old thing of parts over here. So, that. Ah. So, as you can see, the gaskets, uh, man, they're a lot more flexible after being in the dishwasher. That's one advantage. It really, that heat, it allows it to soak in some moisture. Uh, really helps preserve it. Now we're gonna just double do it as I always do. I always, especially on older machines, I always like to just pledge the gaskets. I find that that to be a very good thing. You can also uh, do that on old electrical cords too. There's really just a weird, this shape of this, it does match up to this, but you kind of have to have some abstract thoughts to really match that up. So I'm gonna grab that. And put that on there and again we're just gonna wipe this down all right so I gotta get this wiring harness all back in and they gave me help they gave me a little that just undoes I think that's really cool I wish I wish recar would do that that would be kind of cool so I'm just taking a look at how things could go or how they do go and it would appear that this goes in here like so 
Next up, I probably have two small screws. There they are. That is going to be this thermal reset. Um, now, if you're not familiar with who actually made this machine, I don't think it was Royal. Um, I believe it was Curtis. Um, or the, uh, who's the other company? They go by, uh, they go by a diff couple of different names. But basically, uh, they made like the Bernina. I had posted on Instagram the, uh, guess what vacuum this was and some somebody actually guessed simplicity freedom which is a soft bag uh direct air machine which was kind of funny um and a bunch of people you know thought it was a recar because that's what it looks like one person did mention think it was a bernina uh and i guess that's what i'm getting at that person was uh i don't remember who it was but point is that that person wins at the game for thinking that was the closest guess i got on Instagram when I asked to ask people about what this is So we're gonna throw the wiring harness. It's just gonna Be up there we're gonna bury it with the screwdriver There because we have to put that get with put this gasket still on there So I'm just kind of looking at how this if I could remember guess how all this sits in there yeah, that looks about right. So there's all these loose wires that are in this sort of machine. That's always kind of bothered me, but again, that's the design. That's not going quite right. There we go. Looking at that, let's just real quick see how the other side of the motor looks. Again, I've never had to pull one of these apart this far, so it's really interesting. Um, I'll point out right there. So the, by the looks of it, the motor, depending on how you put it in there, is not straight in the hole. So it's like got an eccentric way that it can move. Um, it's really kind of an interesting design feature of the machine, but it looks closest to to be, and now you can see the shafts moved over to the other side. I think it goes in there like that is my point. Um, again, there's no real manual or anything for this anymore at this point. It's all just kind of guesswork. I don't like how any of this fits. I think what we're gonna do is, yeah, we're gonna put it in there like that, and then it looks like the clip actually make sure nothing gets caught in there. But it looks like the clip for the light goes through right here. means this just hides. I'm kind of hoping this would have some more slack on it. Uh, I'm just seeing if I can get some more slack out of it. I really can't. That's really how that's got to go. Talk about design choices I, I would not have gone with personally. But yeah, that's that's where that goes. And this all would never be they this would never be acceptable today. This this kind of design. All right, so now that I've fumbled about with that. You can see this kind of changed color from the hard water deposits in my dishwasher. Let's see if I can just wipe some of that off. Yeah, that's the best it's going to be. Oh, we can't quite put that together yet. We have to now flip the machine 
and work on all this good stuff real quick on somewhere over here. Aha. Uh -huh. All this. Watch it. See what it looks like in there. It's kind of cavernous. Some cool stuff in there. So in order to get this apart, unfortunately, I had to cut the quick disconnect off the end, which really, really bothers me uh, in an OCD sort of way, but that is what it is. Yeah. They literally put the quick disconnect on the cord after it goes through, which was kind of defeats the purpose of the quick disconnect. Um, and again, these are all very strange design choices. And if we wonder why Royal's no longer a company, uh, or why the brand doesn't mean anything, look at some of these strange things. Think if this machine had come out and was slightly better quality, uh, you know, a little bit before slightly better quality, this would not be uh, the end of a royal, maybe, but because they didn't, this is what we have to deal with. I always like to use wire nuts. Some people prefer crimps. I really like wire nuts because they just come off easy. There's so much room to work in here, too. When you look at some modern machines um, where there's not as nearly as much room to work, So, and then we use the tape as lock tie, essentially. Because vacuums do rattle around, so you don't want any of this rattling loose in here. So now that I've done that, let's put the rest of the guts back together. There is a, that guy goes on there. So we got a couple of things here. That hose looks pretty clean. Sometimes those need to be blown out. I don't think this machine got that much use. The more I look at this, it really doesn't look like it saw as much use as it could have for its age. It's probably grandma's little, probably some grandma bought this and couldn't really use this due to its weight or some, some crap like that. So that's just all goes in there and we have a clamp that goes down there and this it's one-sided and you can see it's glass reinforced interesting because nothing else is glass reinforced on this machine you know I had to check to see what color screws went where because to me it, it, these would not make sense to put these ugly screws where the customer is going to see them but I just checked and those those do Again, I, this is probably like the third one of these I've ever seen in my life. Uh, I would think the black screws would go there. The thread pitch is the same, so it really doesn't matter if you mix them up, but when trying to keep something original, why not? Alright. Uh, next, the rope gasket. And again, we're just wiping this down with a little bit of furniture polish to keep it moist and keep it from degrading. And now we can get to putting the rest of this back together. Clear some of these tools out of the way. It's got kind of a natural form to it. We'll flip it. That'll make it really fresh. Or a lot of things actually on vacuums I end up flipping the gasket on uh, just to give it a little bit more life. I 
All right, now, and as you can see, there's no seals anywhere else in here other than this and these. Uh, so this is this machine would leak dust uh, through here and some other places if you put a uh, particle counter on it. So it's really only as good as the bags that you put in it. Um, which will be very good because a Hoover Y bag is actually going to fit in here that we will show a little bit later. Man, all that just goes together perfectly. I do like that. So now the four big ones should hold this together in theory. Let's uh, get the age of this. We're going to do this part by hand. Um, this cover won't be brittle, but this one, it's such an odd shape. I'd be very surprised if it wasn't brittle in some way. And that's how a lot of these old machines are. When you put them back together, you end up doing some stuff by hand. All right. That all feels good, looks good. We now have the light. Let's start. I want to get the nozzle on this machine next. I guess the first thing, though, I should really, really, really do. Sorry, the battery died. So we gotta get this back together. Now something, again, because of the age of the machine we're gonna do, is throw a little bit of grease on here. Just a little bit. I love that my camera gives me error messages about my third party batteries. That's so unnecessary. And we'll just put this on here. And you'll see this will just kind of flop around there for a second. Ah, a little bit harsher than I had anticipated. What can one do? Oh, I see how all this goes. That's probably our last beige screw to hold the light bulb in. Can you see all wondering what I'm doing? All right, and then once the light bulb is in, then the wires all go back to their pretty little home. I'm going to wipe the excess grease off there. And now we have this piece, which needs to be cleaned up. I didn't, because of the kind of metal this is, I didn't think it would dishwasher very well. So I'm just going to, real quick, clean that up with the toothbrush. So this is another part where you could put a little grease on. Uh, the problem is, is excess grease on this will flop and hit the belt. So we're talking just a thin layer. Give you an idea how thin a layer we're doing there. Because we don't want that on the belt at all. Or the motor shaft, that would be bad. So you just gotta practice run, figure out which way this goes. All right, yep. And this has to, yep, get on there. Now, 
and little metal pieces like this were really high tech when this machine was built. This was like kind of state of the art shit. So now I'm gonna put the remaining plastic parts in. There's two big screws and two little screws. I remember that much of the machine. Put the little screw in first. And again, because it's brittle, we're doing this all by hand. All right, next, you got this, just like a recar. Uh, that sticks out there. Man, that wire is tighter than it should be for the light. Don't know if anybody can hear that, but it just doesn't seem quite right. There we go. That makes sense. All right. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> that all makes a little bit more sense. So that just goes on there. Oh, now we got the... Adjustment. Oh, also the wheels move back and forth. Give them some kosher love. Can keep it from squeaking too much. I didn't want to bore anybody by taking the brush roller apart. There's not much to it. There's nothing that really can be serviced. These bearings are hermetically sealed. If you want, you can drop a bit of oil on them. Uh, and it'll get soaked in through the bearing shield, but really it's not a vise, it's not necessary. Um, you just really want to get the schmutz out of there, just like I just did just now. That, that could cause problems. And with these brush rollers being no longer available, yes, parts of them are metal, but most of it's plastic, so you really, really do not want to have to try to source one of these. Thankfully there's no clutch or anything in this one. I'm not a fan of clutches and brush rollers. It's just one more thing to wear out. So then we're just going to put our snap ring back together. For those who don't know, I don't actually ever use a snap ring tool for this sort of thing. I usually just use a screwdriver. Uh, but there is a tool for doing this, which with some things can make it easier. All right. Next, I have the belt. Yep. And this is, um, you can use a, a style 12 belt. Um, I am using actually a Simplicity Recar belt. These are really high quality and they fit it like a glove. So in case you're wondering what kind of belt I'm going to use. Yep. There's no play. Man, that's... That is smooth. All right. We'll put the lid on. This just rocks on. Just like a Simplicity Recar. Maybe. My bumper might be... Yeah, the bumper slightly out of place. Let's see where the bumper just interfered there. And then this should just slide. Yep, locked. There we go. And again, a little bit of tri flow on the axle makes a big difference that. Oh, it's starting to look like a vacuum cleaner again, ain't it? There is this to put back on. 
with its trifecto screws. Oh, that just gets plugged in there, by the way. Now we're going to put some of these screws back. And that puts that together. Some of the tools are gonna to go back to their rightful home after being dishboshed. We're going to put this hose finally back in its place so it stopped flopping around. Next, we have a little thing to do which is the bag. It's our last three screws. Right here. For those wondering what kind of bags to buy, you can buy Dirt W bags uh, all day long. Yes, you can. But uh, these have a nice gasket on them. They are a he proven HEPA filtration medium. <laughs> and Hoover HEPA wire are a lot easier to find. You can see that just fits it like a glove. Now there is a pre-motor filter I'm missing. I had to rinse that out, but it's, it's a generic electrostatic filter. And then there is a HEPA filter right here, which actually, really was not that bad. So we're gonna reuse this and hope it doesn't have any funky odors to it right there. So I will go back and put that in, but just keep in mind you need that for everybody in the comment section who will say something about that. So let's just put the upholstery tool back. I don't have the crevice tool, unfortunately. And get the empty box out of the way. Well, let's see. How it works. I suspect that this is going to vacuum very, very well. Oh, yes, it does. Oh, my. A lot of airflow. That's really good. That's that is on par with a lot of higher end machines. That is particularly good. Why the uh, that that's like those are SIBO numbers <laughs> um, to give anybody an idea. Now I have a dilemma. Uh, because I took a risk and I put this in the dishwasher. You notice the colors are a little different between these two. Um, not exactly sure how I'm going to deal with that. And that really upsets me that that's how that came out. But pull some of these white marks off here just real quick. So I think what we're going to do for now Under my bench is where all my dirty rags go and my clean rags are. So, excuse me. I think we're just gonna wipe it down and call it good with a little bit of polish. So that's my Royal Prestige 7300. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. If you have one of these, I would love to hear from you because these are super, super rare. And hit that subscribe button. There's a link below to commonly available vacuum supplies. I'll try to put some links in the description to the supplies for this as well. And check out our Patreon or one of our other videos. Can your vacuum do this? How about this? Probably not. That's why you're watching this video. Because your vacuum isn't doing this. Well, if you're looking for a straightforward, easy to use, and powerful vacuum cleaner, you should check out my video on the Zero-G. It's one of the best values on the market. 
The Zero G is also very durable. It glides effortlessly, moving on a cushion of air. Check out my review in the card above.